So with this short instructions and a few words on the etiquette on Zoom, we get started off on the first side event. And it's my pleasure to welcome Ms. Yang Junyao, sub-regional coordinator for FAO of the sub-regional office in Apian, Samoa for the Pacific. Over to you, Ms. Yao. Afternoon and uh, evening. As introduced by Shreda, my name is Yang Junyao, and I'm the FAO uh, sub-regional coordinator for the Pacific Islands. Uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to welcome you all to this uh, side event titled the uh, Seas Solutions Platform, Knowledge Sharing to Accelerate Achievements of the SDGs, Samoa Pathway and the Food Systems Summit Goals. Uh, with the COVID-19 adding on top of the unique challenges that uh, the Seas confront, I feel decided to create the Seas Solutions Platform in 2021 by the senior management team in HQ, as well as the decentralized offices, including the sub-regional office in the Pacific. So the aim of uh, the creation of the platform is to facilitate the knowledge sharing and accelerate progress for achieving the SDGs, the Samoa Pathway, and the Food Systems Summit goals for the seats. Uh, to launch the platform and also to start uh, facilitating the knowledge sharing among the seas, I feel in partnership with the government of Fiji as co-host and the International Telecommunication Union as a co-partner, organized the first Seas Solutions Forum on 30th and 31st August last year, 2021. The objectives of this side event are therefore to brief the APRC audience about the outcomes of this uh, very successful solutions forum in 2021, and also to engage the regional stakeholders over the implementation of the forum's recommendations, and also share knowledge on good innovation and the digital agricultural practices suitable for the seas among the APRC participants. So though with the very packed objectives as introduced above, we have only one hour with the full agenda of speakers, panelists, and also uh, we have the session uh, to hear the audience if you have questions uh, to uh, address to the panelists and also the speakers. To start to uh, set the context, so please uh, let me ask the secretary to play the short video. Shrida, back to you, please. Small island developing states are characterized by remoteness, small and dispersed populations, and economies, as well as vulnerability to natural disasters linked to climate change. They depend on imported foods and tourism and have a high incidence of non-communicable diseases. The impacts of COVID-19 are intensifying these challenges and rolling back the gains that were made in achieving the sustainable development goals in these countries. It is within this context FAO created the SID Solutions Platform. The aim of the platform is to facilitate knowledge sharing and accelerate progress for achieving SDGs, specifically those related to agri-food systems, nutrition and the environment. The platform was launched during the SID Solutions Forum that was organized by FAO in partnership with the International Telecommunication Union and the government of Fiji as a co-host. The forum that was held on the 30th and 31st of August 2021 welcomed 1,600 people who attended either virtually or physically in Apia, Samoa. Twelve key action points were formulated based on the rich discussions of the two-day forum. They cover all of the most urgent steps that will lead to scaling up and replicating identified 2021 SID solutions to support the implementation of the agreements of the 2021 UN Food Systems Summit and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Thank you, Secretary. Now, I have the pleasure to invite uh, Dr. Chu Dong-Yu, 
I feel Director General to deliver our welcome statement. Director General, the floor is yours. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this event is especially important for me as it will highlight the centrality of innovation, science, and technology for the positive transformation of agrophysics to be more efficient, more inclusive, more resilient, and more sustainable. This event will build on the achievement of the Seeds Solution Forum here in 2021, which launched the Seeds Solution Platform that will be at the center of the today's discussion. There was a strong sign of a solidarity from non-seeds government and the development partners who attended the forum, and we needed to capitalize on that moment. The Seeds Solution Platform is an important tool because it helps us address the common challenges such as remoteness, small and dispersed geographies, population, and economies high exposure and vulnerabilities to natural disaster due to the impact of the climate crisis. Dependence on the import, the food and the tourism, and a high incidence of non-communicable disease. These challenges have become even more complex due to the pandemic and they can only be effectively addressed by the harnessing science, technology and innovation. We need a science to identify synergies and trade-offs and to advance evidence-based policy making. Dear colleagues, strengthening the science policy interface is critical. Today's event provides an opportunity to share the experience and exchange ideas on how increased innovation and the digitalization can have the seed and the rest of the world achieve the multiple and cross-cutting targets of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The Samoa Pathway Framework for Action and the UN Food System Summit follow up action. The Seed Solution Platform promotes new technologies and also facilitate knowledge sharing on social institutional policy and financial innovation. It is about new ways of thinking and collaborating. To reach impact at a scale, we must develop new and tangible partnerships, including with civil societies and the private sector. Collectively, we can and we must do more to place science and innovation firmly at the center of our decisions and actions for better production, better nutrition, a better environment, a better life for all, leaving no one behind. I wish you a productive event, and thank you. Thank you, Director General. I now have the great pleasure to invite the Honorable Mahandra Reddy, the Minister for Agriculture, Water, Waste, and Environment, Fiji, to deliver the keynote statement. Honorable Minister, the floor is yours. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend my thanks to the organizers for, the, for inviting Fiji to speak at this important side event on the SIT Solutions Platform, knowledge sharing to accelerate the achievement of SDGs, Samoa Pathway, and Food Systems Summit goals. The challenges and gaps, as well as the opportunities and solutions related to boosting innovation and digitalization are numerous and are oftentimes co-shared especially between small island developing states or SIDS. As my Prime Minister noted during the forums, SIDS are different chapters of the same book. This was the very reason behind launching the SIDS solution platform back in August 2021. The government of Fiji was very pleased to co-host the launch of this important forum together with FAO and we are happy to continue being part of various discussions organized around SIDS solutions discusses like this one. As I mentioned, SIDS members share a number of the same challenges. Amongst them are remoteness, small and dispersed geographies and economies, vulnerability to natural disasters, dependence on imported foods and tourism, and a high incidence of non-communicable diseases. The impact of COVID-19 has magnified these challenges in many SIDS countries around the world. However, 
The pandemic has also pushed us to accelerate the development and adoption of digital technology. For example, in Fiji, data usage has spiked by 300% since the start of the pandemic. We should take advantage of this momentum to transform the way we produce, consume, and trade our food. The time has come to start leveraging the digitalization of agri-food systems to support COVID-19 recovery, as well as improve food and nutrition security and resilient societies. These efforts can also help us make agriculture more attractive to younger farmers. They can also reduce food waste and boost the deployment of climate-smart agriculture practices. The SIDS Solution Platform is here to do just that. The platform opens a new frontier of cooperation between countries for sharing innovations and digitalization to support SIDS. A lot has been achieved, but we do not plan to stop here. There is much work to be done. First of all, we need more partner countries to join our efforts. The more countries we have under SIDS solution umbrella, the richer our discussions, collaborations and outcomes will be. Secondly, we need international financial institutions, more vertical donors and donor countries to demonstrate solidarity and back up this incredibly important work. Without financial and technical support from our long-standing donors, the SIDS solutions goals will be impossible to achieve. And finally, we need to act. We have identified pilot solutions and in-depth conver conver conversions around the next steps and opportunities. Now is it, 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 is it time to act and scale up the solutions and ideas by supporting our innovators to contribute to the achievement of the SDGs, the Samoa Pathway, and the Food System Summit Dialogue Goals. At the core of all these three points are partnerships and collaboration. I'm certain that SITS will be able to recover from the pandemic, build sustainable, clean food systems, and continue to strengthen climate resilience to deliver economic prosperity. But SITS cannot do it alone. We need strong partnerships, resourcing, and financing that is fast deploying and affordable and accessible. Only through strong and durable partnerships, innovation, and digitalization, SITS can modernize agri-food systems and rural economies to ensure food and nutritional security, all crucial for delivering on the pledges made under various frameworks like the SDG, the Samoa Pathway, and the 2021 Food Systems Summit. Thank you. Manakavakilevo. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for this uh, very inspiring words. So I'm now in White Lahontama. I feel Deputy Director General to introduce the high-level results and the follow-up actions concluded from the Seed Solutions Forum. Uh, Deputy Director General Lohan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Chang Jun. Uh, dear Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are hearing me well. Uh, I would like to welcome you warmly to this uh, important APRC side event. As mentioned by the Director General, today we are building uh, on the goals, ideas and outcomes of the SEEDS uh, Solution Forum. Uh, for us, it's a flagship event. Uh, we organized it in partnership with the International Telecommunication Union and with the government of Fiji as a co-host uh, in August, as you will all uh, recall, August 2021. It was recalled in the introduction that um, about uh, 1,600 people from uh, various countries attended the forum, either virtually or physically in, uh, in Apia, uh, Samoa. Nine head of states and governments, 20 ministers from seats, as well as other high-level representatives from the countries, international organizations and UN organizations, including the FAO Director General, were there. Important to note uh, that the ministerial representation from non seeds countries at the forum, for example, China, Ireland, demonstrated a strong solidarity and partnership between seeds and the rest of the world in advancing a shared development agenda in the seeds. The forum gathered and showcased 11 seed solution innovators, women and youth leaders, parliamentarians, policymakers, UN and development partner officials, researchers, farmers, and fishers. The take-home message was very clear. We need 
to incentivize and support locally grown solutions of innovation and digitalization that can accelerate the achievement of the SDGs and the Samoa pathway while mitigating the impact of the COVID pandemic to build back better. As a key result of uh, the forum, FAO launched the Seed Solution Platform, which has already begun to facilitate knowledge sharing, not only between the seeds, but also with other countries with uh, similar challenges. The, the forum participants agreed on uh, several recommendations. Uh, they were uh, summarized in 12 key practical and precise action points that will guide the way forward while developing homegrown seed solution. So let me uh, you know, take a, a, a deeper dive into the, these uh, crucial action points in order to, to, to set the scene for this uh, session. The first action point calls for harnessing the power of information and communication technology in order to build effective and resilient agri-food systems to enable farmers, fishers, and artisans of all genders and age to gain the full benefit of development. The second and third points note the importance of strengthening ICT infrastructure with special emphasis on the agriculture and fishery sectors, as well as supporting the development and implementation of uh, what we call e-agriculture strategies linked to national ICT strategies. The fourth point calls on partners to support, promote, scale up, and replicate homegrown seed solution, as well as provide tangible long-term assistance including a Pacific startup package. The fifth and sixth points call for support to the leadership of women and youth in the use of digital agri-food system technologies, including building financial and digital literacy. The seventh and eighth points refer to the promotion and the scaling up of the seed solution platform itself and to and pledge to, to submit it to UNDSA, UNDESA, as a key seed partner to support the implementation of the Samoa pathway and the SDGs. Point nine and 10 call for investing in partnership and knowledge sharing alliances, including through South-South and tri Triangular Cooperation to catalyze and scale up seed solutions identified in 2021. Under the 11th point, the participants call for support to the application of the multidimensional vulnerability index, the one that is currently being developed in line with the Samoa pathway to allow the inclusion of many income-based criteria to assess eligibility for concessionary finance. Finally, point 12 calls for the establishment of structured and targeted regional financing appropriate for the seeds. In his uh, opening remark uh, at the forum, FAO Director General assured members that the platform is for results and that the forum will not be the usual one-off event. Let me give you a few examples. On 1 February 2022, through its uh, liaison office in Brussels, Geneva, and New York, FAO kicked off a series of events touted as the FAO Global Seeds Solution Dialogue. These dialogues on agri-food systems transformation will run for the next two years. The event drew global attention to not only the ch challenges that seed confront, but also the local innovation and creativity that can be leveraged in seeds to catalyze agri-food systems. This uh, 1 February event was attended by more than 253 people, including the participation of permanent representation, government officials, intergovernmental organizations, UN agencies, NGOs, academics, and other partners based in Brussels, Geneva, New York, Rome, and around the world. 
The seed solution dialogue series is part of FAO's continued commitment and efforts to ensure seeds remain high on the agenda in Brussels, Geneva, Rome, New York, and beyond. I should also share that uh, drawing on the South-South and triangular cooperation modality, FAO secured an agreement with the government of Korea to facilitate the training of uh, Pacific seed farmers and producers in agri-food system value addition. Under this agreement, Pacific seeds farmers and producers will travel to Korea in 2022 to exchange and learn from Korean farmers. FAO and the ITU are leading a partnership with ILO, UNOPS, UNESCO, and UNICEF to implement a $6 million project for accelerating SDG achievement through digital transformation in Cook Islands, Kiribati, the Federated States of Micronesia, Republic of Marshall Islands, Nauru, Palo, New, and Tokelau. The two years project starts on the 1st of May and the budget is uh, largely a combined sum from a UN Joint SDG Fund and FAO uh, Technical Cooperation Program or TCP Program Fund. FAO is uh, continuing to identify and profile more solutions of innovation in SEEDS as a tool for knowledge sharing. We are organizing an Agri Innovation and Digitalization Bootcamp in 2022 to nurture and scale up at least two solutions in each Pacific seed. We have invested in replicating the MyCana app, a nutrition education tool from Fiji to Tonga, and we are partnering with the University of the South Pacific to scale up the locally produced hot hair dyer for producing potato and cassava chips in Solomon Islands. We have also invested in improving the functionality of existing digital solutions in Fiji, Samoa, and Solomon Islands by addressing the gender divide. Again, all these are just a few examples of what FAO will continue to do by using its TCP funds to, to attract partnerships and investment to support the shared agenda of SEEDS through the SEEDS solutions platform. As mentioned at the forum, uh, seeds speak a common language. Uh, today it was mentioned uh, a common book with uh, different chapters. A common book of uh, shared experience and challenges. Innovation is our beacon of light in overcoming these challenges effectively and collaboratively. Whether you are a panelist or an attendee of today's event, keep these valuable and concrete action points in mind. I wish you a very productive session. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Lahon Thomas, uh, for taking your time to uh, take us through uh, about this 12 uh, recommendations that were concluded uh, from the Seed Solutions Forum. And also, you introduced those uh, follow up actions that I feel have already taken and also will take in the coming years. Uh, to uh, implement this uh, follow-up actions from Atheos Ant. And I think this has been highlighted by you, but also by the DG, by saying that the Seed Solutions Forum is not uh, one ad hoc uh, event, but rather is a kickoff of the serious actions that I feel will be partner with the different stakeholders to promote the Seed Solutions in the coming years and also further uh, to support the countries to achieve the SDGs, but also the uh, Samoa pathway. So with this uh, really uh, insightful uh, introductions and the presentations from your aunt, thank you so much uh, for this. And uh, as uh, uh, colleagues uh, you see from the program of the side event, uh, we are going to have a panel discussion. Uh, following this uh, opening remarks from the FAO DG Fiji Minister, as well as FAO uh, DDG. And uh, for the panel discussion, I am going to invite uh, my colleague, uh, Joseph, uh, to facilitate the next session. So Joseph, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Zanjan. Excellencies, Honorable government officials, distinguished guests and colleagues. 
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your current location. My name is Joseph Nyeman, and I'm the Nutritional Food Systems Officer for FAO in the Pacific Islands. In this role, I support the technical work on the Seas Solutions platform. It is therefore my honor and pleasure to facilitate this panel discussion by replacing Mrs. Simona Marinesco, the UN Resident Coordinator for the Samoa based Resident Coordinator's Office, who is currently traveling. The focus of the panel discussion today is partnership and financing for accelerating implementation of the forum's recommendations and ensuring that they contribute to the SDGs, the Samoa Pathway, and the Full System Summit Dialogue Goals. Now, please allow me to welcome and introduce our distinguished panelists. Mrs. Benoan Bosquet, Regional Director, Asia and the Pacific World Bank. Mrs. Fiona Lane, Director, Agricultural Development and Food Security Section, Climate Financing and Programming Branch, the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Mrs. Shelley C. Borridge, President, Samoa Women's Association of Growers and Managing Director of Bawaula Vanilla. And lastly, His Excellency, Dr. Walton Webster, Chair of the Association of Small Island States and also permanent representatives, representative of Atingua and Barbuda to the United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased now to turn to our distinguished guests to offer some different perspectives. If I may, I would like to call on Mr. Benoan Buskert, Regional Director, Asia and the Pacific for the World Bank. Mr. Buskert, from the perspective of the World Bank, what are your insights on the subject of discussion for this panel, which is partnership and financing for accelerating implementation of the forum's recommendations and assurance that they contribute to the SDGs, the Samoa Pathway, and the recently developed Global Food Systems Summit Dialogue Goals. Mr. Benoan, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Niema, and uh, good uh, day uh, to all the participants, uh, excellencies, and uh, colleagues. Thanks very much for the opportunity uh, to share a few insights uh, with uh, uh, the uh, group uh, gathered here for this uh, important uh, side event. Um, I, I will, uh, because of uh, uh, lack of time, I will go straight uh, to the point and, and tell you a little bit about what the World Bank Group uh, does to promote uh, financing innovations and digitalization in Pacific Island countries. Um, first, uh, in terms of financing innovations, I'd like to highlight two initiatives uh, that we support at the World Bank Group. The first one is productive agri-business partnerships uh, and value chain uh, development. This entails uh, public-private partnerships, uh, which are an effective model for expanding smallholder access to services and markets and agribusiness development in the cocoa and coffee sectors in particular. This uh, uh, comes along with capacity building in order to address uh, gaps in information and know-how, uh, both technical and market-related information, for example, uh, new technologies and uh, improved uh, planting materials. Um, as well, we support producer organizations and micro, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises to commercialize products uh, in a number of uh, key value chains, 
cocoa, uh, coconut, coffee, spices, um, small livestock, fish, honey, uh, and, uh, and to promote diversification to assist um, uh, the mitigation of shocks and, and risks. In addition to these uh, productive agribusiness partnerships, we also um, foster uh, and issue matching grants for increasing on-farm productivity and improving access to markets. And so farmers uh, are able to increase on-farm productivity uh, and fisher folk improve the management of their fishery resources. Uh, that also enhance uh, the linkage between their production and uh, the markets. And, and obviously these initiatives in terms of financing, you know, are typically coupled with broader measures in particular strengthening national institutions for crop uh, and, and livestock or uh, as the case may be enhancing the management of the region's uh, shared oceanic and coastal fisheries. And then the second uh, set of uh, experiences that I wanted to quickly share with you uh, has to do with uh, digitalization. And here I would like to mention e-vouchers and e-monitoring. The, the e-vouchers first, uh, we are piloting in uh, Samoa, uh, there the, the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock uh, was able to disburse matching grants to a number of approved farmers using this new e-voucher system. And what we see as a result uh, of using this e-voucher system, farmers are now able to purchase goods, equipment, and materials from a pre-approved list of eligible items through uh, an online system. And this reduces transaction costs, it increases flexibility, uh, as well as transparency and uh, accountability. So very useful mechanism that is tested now in uh, a range of situations around the world. And then finally, when it comes to e-monitoring as well as e-reporting, this is uh, something that we now support uh, in eight Pacific Island, as well as the uh, Regional Fisheries uh, Forum Agency. Um, it uh, basically puts Pacific Island countries on a par with the most advanced uh, fisheries management systems used in North America or Europe. And, and what happens there is that as part of obtaining access to fishing rights, the vessels that are authorized to operate are equipped with video cameras and sensors to monitor and record fishing activities that will make it possible to the regulate, for the regulators to verify the fishing logbooks, which by themselves are not reliable. And what we see in terms of impacts is that there's now a much higher transparency, uh, a possibility to penalize non-responsible uh, fishing vessels because the countries are able to detect under-reporting of catch or misreporting of bycatch. Over time, this e-monitoring supports improved uh, data for better management of the fishery stocks themselves. And we hope that this is also going to give countries an idea of how tuna stocks respond to climate change because they migrate, as we know, away from uh, the equator. And as well, uh, this e-monitoring and e-reporting system uh, facilitates data exchange among regional management and governance bodies, uh, which is critical for uh, the shared management arrangement that the Pacific Island countries have uh, uh, adopted. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. If there is a need for further information about these initiatives, uh, my colleagues and I would be happy 
uh, to indeed uh, oblige. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, we'll listen to the next speaker. Thank you, Mr. Benoa. I'm quite sure um, colleagues, community groups, but also governments will be interested uh, in what you've said. Uh, because you've spoken about the World Bank, uh, its support to both land-based and marine-based value chains, which is important for community groups. But also I think in terms of governments knowing that Pacific Island countries are surrounded by a lot of water and fish and with huge exclusive economic zones that they cannot control. So your offering on the bank support in terms of regulating uh, capacity building uh, for controlling illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing activities will be quite uh, an issue of interest to governments. Without delaying, I will try to move on to a different perspective, and that is from the vantage point of governments, especially governments that are very active in seats. For this reason, I will invite Ms. Fiona Lane, Director of Agricultural Development Food and Food Security Section, Climate Financing and Programming Branch, the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Ms. Lane, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, and hello to our distinguished guests and colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this, uh, in this panel on these very important topics. Um, as I've been introduced, I'm with the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. As a development partner in agriculture and food security in the Pacific, we are very much guided by, by the priorities of the Pacific. And these have been outlined through the Samoa pathway, uh, national and regional dialogues that occurred ahead of the UN Food System Summit, um, and uh, in, more regularly in the two yearly meetings of the Pacific Ministers of Agriculture and, uh, and Forestry. And so we sort of take, we take our lead from, from those forums. Um, and if I reflect on the on the recent Pacific Heads of Ag and Forestry meeting, um, very, very clear priorities, increasing food and nutrition security, building resilience to the impacts of climate change, enhancing biosecurity, promoting value adding and downstream processing, and improving livelihoods um, and contributing to economic growth uh, in the Pacific Island region. So, so it's a, it's a challenging question as to how to mobilise the necessary resources and partnerships to, to catalyse and scale up in order to deliver on those specific priorities. And that has been very much what the SID Solution Platform has been looking at and what I'll, I'll reflect on now, that sort of issue of how you, how you catalyse partnerships, how you mobilise resources. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have a straightforward answer. Um, and sharing knowledge through the SIDS platform is, is one way to, um, to assist. But, you know, every country is different, of course, and every community is different. Um, but what is the same, I think, is that, is that scale up requires many different partners to work together. Our farmers, governments, the private sector, NGOs, researchers, and, and ourselves as development donors. Um, I mean, we're very pleased to, to be building a number of um, partnerships in, uh, in agriculture-related areas. And I'll give you just a couple of examples um, so that you can sort of get, get, a, get a sense of, of what we do um, from the Australian perspective. Um, I think as, uh, as Director General Chu mentioned, the, the private sector is so very important to, to achieving scale up and scale up of innovative solutions. Um, we're a, um, a long-term funder of um, an initiative called the Market Development Facility, um, which operates in a number of countries, including uh, Fiji. It, it's very much a partnership model, and it looks for opportunities to support private sector actors to adopt new practices. And if I give you a, a tangible example of that, um, acidic soil is a widespread problem. In, uh, in sugarcane producing countries, including Fiji. Um, and um, you can um, manage acidic soils through the application of lime. 
And so uh, through our market development facility, we, um, we, we, we drew upon some research that was done by the Australian Centre of International Agriculture um, Research. So, so we had a solid evidence base for how to, to apply this product. And then working with, with the industry, with potential uh, suppliers and distributors of, um, of lime, and then with farmers, we basically worked up through our market development facility a sort of partnership that could um, source this product, this lime, this additive, distribute it through a, a network of hardware stores, and then engage with farmers so they understood the product and were able to apply it. So thereby we went from uh, something that was a sort of research finding into something that was a scaled solution that could be accessed by you know, thousands, thousands of farmers. Um, I think the other issue to reflect upon is, is the importance of exports for the, for the Pacific. Um, you know, Pacific countries are developing very unique high value products, um, cacao, vanilla, coffee, um, and the, these export pathways are certainly challenging. Um, challenging to build and challenging to maintain. And, and Shelley, who's our next speaker, I think will um, we'll touch upon that. But again, we've looked to um, build some long-term support through our Pacific Horticulture and Market Access Scheme that Australia and New Zealand funds to help exporters in, in many different locations across the Pacific to build and maintain those pathways. Again, so we can go, we can go to scale. Um, of course, every situation is different, as I mentioned, and um, it, it may not always be a private sector um, partner that, that can take things to scale. It may well be an NGO or a community-based organisation. And we've uh, had, some, had some great success with, uh, with, with NGOs, uh, one in particular, Live and Learn, who we work with in Tuvalu, to, to scale up the production of fresh, uh, fresh produce. Um, and uh, in, in a water and soil limited environment such as Tuvalu. Um, so I might, um, I'm very much aware of time, um, draw things to a close, but, but I guess in, in using, um, you know, partnerships are key to, uh, to catalyzing and scaling up investment. Um, and, and we are very pleased to continue to work with our partners in the Pacific to do that. Thank you very much. Ms. Lynn. Um, I think our innovators will be quite intrigued listening to you. I should recall that the FEO Director General in 2021, when he unveiled the Sea Solutions platform, he made it very clear that the goal is to facilitate knowledge sharing, to allow us also to identify innovative solutions and replicate them. And I see that, Fiona, you did talk about replicating solutions. I should remind um, the audience that this is very important because in Solomon Islands, we did identify a solution by an ordinary farmer, a businessman, if you want, a small private sector, who created a hot air dryer device that produces potato chips. Now, this innovation is very important because it's within a context where you have no communicable diseases, partly because people eat food that is saturated with a lot of um, saturated fat. So hearing about how to replicate solutions is very important because this gentleman would like to expand this initiative. And for us, we see these kind of people as private sector. So thank you very much, uh, Fiona. Now I will move on to our next speaker, who is actually from the, if you want, the private sector, but she's also an innovator. And she will be speaking, sharing a lot of uh, perspectives from that vantage point of the local innovators. And she is Mrs. Shirley Birch, who is the president of the Samoa Women's Association of Growers. But she's also uh, the innovator of the Samoa uh, Vanilla uh, Initiative. Mrs. Birch, I give you the floor, please. Thank you, Joseph. Excellencies, honorable officials and esteemed uh, panelists, I extend warm greetings to you all from my beautiful country, Samoa. It is certainly an honor to be the nominated representative of a SID civil society organization for this first site event today. 
My name is Shelley Burrich, and this is my third year as president for the Samoa Women's Association of Growers, otherwise known as SWAG. I'm also the founder and owner of the sole organic vanilla farm in Samoa called Vaala Vanilla. SWAG was established in just under four years ago from the need for closing the gap for women to access information and resources for women growers and farmers in Samoa. This NGO provides women growers and farmers with opportunities for business, networking, training and education accessing local and international markets and socializing in a supportive open environment to share traditional and environmentally safe solutions to modern day agricultural needs. Due to the economic stresses caused by COVID in Samoa, more previously employed women are turning to micro business ventures in the informal space. Pop up markets, new market spaces that are available on Saturdays, roadside vendors, and increased activity on online market platforms has helped support struggling families and female-headed households. It is estimated 70% of stalls are managed and staffed by women. SWAG Saturday Markets offer our membership and casual vendors a safe environment to sell their produce, baking and handicrafts. SWAG helps to promote vendors through our Facebook page with just over 6,000 followers, giving many of these vendors an opportunity to sell their produce in and outside of Samoa. Between 75 to 90% of vendors working at Pacific marketplaces are women, and their earnings often make up a significant portion of the incomes of many lower income households. Within the context of today's discussion topic, I'd like to focus on what was noted from the 2021 SID Solutions Forum. If I may recap just a couple of um, statements that I had made uh, within the innovative statement back then, we asked, where to now? We wanted to see tangible results. We also said, because we are small, we require long-term support and assistance. When we talk about financing for innovatives and SIDS, let us remember that it's not just about technical support and peer-to-peer -peer learning. We need financial support too. Not having the financial tangible resources and for some of us, open payment gateways to utilize digital technology as a means of additional financial income is a major challenge and, and a big roadblock for e-commerce entrepreneurs. The SIDS Solutions platform can be an opportunity for Australia, the World Bank and other major stakeholders to support innovatives. And if I may highlight a couple of uh, some of the leader statements that were made at the 2021 uh, Solutions Forum. The Honourable Fiji P Prime Minister, Honourable Joe Bainamarama said, no innovation can be too small to make a difference. The Cook Island Prime Minister, Honorable Mark Brown said, turning ideas into results requires commitment with partners. And our very own Samoa uh, Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries, our Honorable uh, Lauli Pulataivao, noted that family farming is a sector in which women and youth play significant roles and it's important in Samoa and other SIDS. He reminded us that rural women face greater constraints than men in accessing technologies, markets, and employment opportunities. And he called for the use of the SID Solutions platform to support farmers and fishers, including women and youth. As an NGO, we are always out there doing the call to action. So, Farmers and innovators and SIDS are private sector business owners and entrepreneurs trying to make a living too. We need to be mindful 
that it's not just about producing food and what we eat. Whether we are farmers or growers, we are all entrepreneurs. When we sell what we produce, we are in business. We need to be also reminded of the 12 key action points that were recommended by the Solutions Forum. And they are important and urgent. And three of them that I believe need immediate action. Number one is support, promote, scale up and replicate homegrown SID solutions, as well as provide tangible long-term assistance, including a Pacific startup package. Number two, build financial and digital literacy and support women and youth to transition into the formal financial ecosystem, especially the digital economy. And number three, establish structured and targeted regional financing appropriate for SIDS, as well as a pool of regional experts on accessing financing, including concessional finance, financing. As we said at the forum, the inaugural SIDS innovators for this platform are committed to supporting each other by sharing skills, knowledge, and the continuation of networking whenever and wherever we are able. We continue to ask our governments, FAO and UN agencies and other development partners for their support, such as te technical assistance, networking and mentoring opportunities, peer-to-peer -peer learning, access to sustainable markets and access to financing, including reduced excise taxes. We need government support to help us expand and replicate in other Pacific and SIDS nations should there be interest in our innovations. And I reiterate once more, we require long-term support because we are small. In closing, I would like to share some pertinent points that I took away from Samoa's International Women's Day event celebrated yesterday, and which I believe are also relevant to the needs of the SIDS innovators and entrepreneurs too. A one size fits all approach is not necessarily the right solution. There is a need to continue proactive and interactive communication with the innovators and entrepreneurs, and it needs to be constant. The financial and technical support needs to be, needs to be designed to meet the needs and the challenges of the innovator. Our needs may change due to the changing environment in which we live. And therefore, so too will the needs of the type of financial and te technical support change. We ask our stakeholders and our leaders to be open and receptive to these changes. Action is needed now. It is not just about saying there is a commitment. Real commitment is when the action is implemented. And there, honourable excellencies and delegates, I conclude. Papatai tele lava, mole avanoa, soi for. Thank you very much, Shelley. As you were speaking, I was receiving several texts from a lot of innovators in the community. And they said, you should keep speaking for the next one hour. Unfortunately, <laughs> I said to them, we can't. Time isn't enough. But thank you very much. Now I will go to the next speaker. And that's the Honorable Dr. Walton Webson, the chair of AOSIS and the permanent representative of Antigua and Barbuda to the United Nations. Honorable, you have the floor. Thank you. It is a pleasure for me to join this meeting on the sidelines of the Regional Conference for Asia Pacific to highlight some of the key findings from the SID Solution Forum. As you are aware, genuine and durable partnership are the catalysts of the Samoa Pathway, and SIDs have greatly benefited from South South and Triangular Cooperation in advancing our development aspirations. We hope to build on this momentum and see new actions and commitments emerging through these dialogues, 
which are enriched through regional experiences and lessons. First and foremost, to overcome the capacity barriers that SIDS face in harnessing innovative solutions and digitalization, we urgently need scaled up financing to create more enabling environments, including establishment of necessary infrastructure. The quantum of resources that are currently available are insufficient to meet the evolving needs of small and developing states especially when faced with the global challenges such as climate change and the socioeconomic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. We also need adequate and predictable channels of funding which can be accessed without additional restrictions for states. Noting, of course, the current rules governing access to public finance are less than ideal. Development support should primarily be directed for the most vulnerable countries to ensure that they are not left behind. And the current GDP per capita income criteria utilized by the IFIs consistently exclude numerous seats. In this context, we wish to highlight the recommendation from the forum to support the application of the multi-dimensional vulnerability index, which is currently being developed and considered by member states. This will be a key political milestone for us that could shape a new and more favorable development trajectory for SIDS during this decade of action. Another important takeaway from the forum is to maintain focus on areas where there are persistent gaps, slow progress in implementation, as we are almost halfway through the implementation of the 2030 agenda and reaching the end of the mandate of the small pathway, there are a number of challenges that inhibits and even set back the lack of resilience to external shocks. That is common, that is the common denominator that must be addressed to preserve and advance the gains we've made in a cross-cutting manner. It is also important to consider co-benefits and long-term impacts of envisioned initiatives to ensure meaningful and sustainable results, which include enhanced resilience of seeds. Last but not least, it is important for us to be able to keep track of the progress made through partnership that emerged from these initiatives in a holistic manner. Efforts must also be made to ensure complementarity and avoid duplication to best utilize the very scarce or limited resources we have available. In this regard, it is important to note synergies with existing partnership under the SIDS partnership framework, as well as other relevant initiatives such as the Global Action Forum on Food Security and Nutrition in SIDS by the FAO. Distinguished colleagues, Excellencies, before concluding, I would like to extend the sincere gratitude of EOSIS to the FAO for their continued close collaboration with SIDS and the leadership in extending the outreach of the SIDS solution platform. Through the discussions such as these, we hope to generate further concrete actions to facilitate implementation of the recommendations in the years ahead. I thank you. Thank you very much, sir, and to the preceding speakers. Um, so at this point in time, um, let me thank uh, all of the um, speakers, the panelists, for this very, very rich uh, discussion. Um, it was a pleasure um, to have you uh, join us um, during this uh, event. Um, I should quickly recall that the C Solutions platform was created to facilitate knowledge exchange. And by inviting all of you here today, for example, the World Bank spoke about supporting public and private partnership. Australia talked about their willingness and involvement in supporting the replication scale up of solutions. And Shirley from the private sector clearly spoke on behalf of innovators in terms of what they would like to see 
to scale up importing solutions that they have developed. With this, I want to conclude that we have had the opportunity for the platform to do exactly what it was created for, which is to facilitate the cross-pollination of information. So thank you very much. And I should let you know that um, the C Solutions platform is always up online and we are available always um, to facilitate information that will be useful and benefit the community. At this point in time, I will pass the microphone on to Ms. Zanshan. Ms. Ms. Yao, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much, Joseph, uh, for your uh, moderation to the panel discussion. I also want to thank all the panelists uh, for your excellent deliberations. I think the composition of today's speakers already show that uh, our commitment to support the seeds countries to scale up for the innovations and also the digital agriculture practices, but also shows a kind of good composition of the partners. Uh, from the UN agencies like FAO, uh, international financing institutions like World Bank and also others, but also the uh, donor countries and also the participating countries, as well as the CSOs and also the private sector. So without such a kind of partnership to engage all these concerned stakeholders, I don't think uh, we can make our journey successful. So with this, I want to thank you again very much uh, for your participation at this event. But uh, let me give the floor to the uh, FAO regional representative and also assistant director general, Zhong Ying Kim, uh, to uh, deliver the closing remarks of this idea. So with this, I end up for my responsibility as uh, the master uh, moderator for this side event. I thank you again. So uh, Zhong Jin, Mr. Kim, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Shang Jun. Um, Honorable Minister of Agriculture, uh, Waterways and the Environment uh, of Fiji, uh, distinguished panelists uh, and uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to uh, thank you very much uh, for very dynamic and uh, thought-provoking uh, discussion uh, today. I think we have heard uh, very clearly uh, from the opening remark of the Director General of FAO and uh, uh, the remark uh, by the Minister of Fiji and uh, to the panel discussions uh, uh, with our esteemed partners the importance of partnership and financing for accelerating the implementation of recommendations uh, uh, from the Sea Solution Forum. Uh, these uh, recommendations and uh, uh, outcome of Sea uh, Solution Forum uh, will eventually contribute to the SDGs, the summer pathways, and the full system summit uh, goals. I think it is very important for us to organize discussion at this uh, uh, 36th session of a regional conference for Asia and Pacific. As so many countries and the international actors uh, are at present and uh, engaged in various discussions uh, in this uh, conference, the efforts and achievements of this must be heard loud and clear across uh, the region. This event was a great opportunity to familiarize ourselves with the outcome of the Sea Solution Forum last year and uh, the key results and outcome uh, to take deep dive into the way forward. And it is indeed uh, comes at a very important uh, time in following of UN Food System Summit. Uh, in view of agri food system transformation, as we discussed the last uh, yesterday. What we are seeing in Pacific seas is an increase in the development of innovative and the locally uh, grown uh, digital tools. These applications are opening up uh, of new horizon from increasing competitiveness in the building resilient agriculture uh, and food systems and combating the ever-threatening uh, climate change. 
this event specifically is an opportunity to once again draw global attention to not only the challenges that seas confront, but also the local capacity and innovation and creativity that exist already in seas, which can be catalyzed the agri-food system in positive way. The theme of this conference highlights our strong belief that innovation and digitalization offer opportunities for improving food production and trade, and it can help to achieve food and nutrition security for seeds, as we are observing in other parts of the world. I want to emphasize that agri-food systems agenda and catalyzing it through innovation and digitalization in seeds is the agenda for all of us. The government of seeds, private sector, development partners, international financial institution, and others must come together to make an impact. It's on coll uh, collective efforts. I'm therefore very happy that Australia and the World Bank are totally engaged over this agenda. I'm excited about the next steps. And I'm especially looking forward to seeing more innovative solutions from seeds that will be identified and replicated this year under the umbrella of seeds solution platform. Again, I want to thank you for your uh, uh, active engagement and I wish you another wonderful uh, side events uh, uh, just behind this. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you, JJ. I think with this, uh, I could uh, declare that uh, this side event is successfully uh, closed. I thank you very much again, and also wish you would stay with us for the next side event.